Hello everyone, just a little shop update before I get started on doing a, another tutorial here. Got a uh, certain little car sitting back here that I'm going to be doing some hinge, and, hinge work on here. Um, but I wanted to just kind of throw this kind of quick update out there. The trailer is done. <laughs> Got axles and wheels and everything on it, tail lights. Got the little side doors on it, even though they're not functional, they're just there for looks. Draw bars all done. And yeah, nice little trailer. Turned out pretty good. Tail end shot. I don't know if I'll put any uh, like name or anything on the side, but I don't know. I might just leave it bare white. Not sure yet how I'm going to do all that, but for the most part, the trailer's done. Yeah. All right, and today this is what we're going to be working on. Um, I know it's been tossed out there a little bit here and there as far as hinge work and such. I've done a few hinges, door hinges, hood hinges, trunk hood hinges. I've done a few of them, and and I've had a little success in pulling these off, but. I'm doing kind of the traditional way, if you want to call it that. Uh, a lot of people use paper clips. I tend to use brass over paper clips, just because it's a little easier to work with and bend and such. Um, the plastic that I use is evergreen. Uh, number 224, one eighth tube. I guess your dimensions and such on it, but all it is is just a plastic tube down to the whatever. But I use this, cut to different lengths. I usually stock up pretty good on this stuff because I use it a lot. And this is the brass that I use. Uh, it's number 15036. Number 8 diameter. And you'll want it to, before you do a lot of work on it, you want to make sure the brass fits through the plastic. Sometimes either the inside of the plastic has some deformities in it where the brass won't really freely go through it. And sometimes the brass, or the diameter isn't really exact either, but you just want to make sure it goes in. Right now it's down to about there. <clears throat> I can see, you can see the end of it in the light when you hold it up to the light. But you want to make sure it goes through. From there, you want to make sure that all the areas that you're going to be working with are free of like any deformities or anything as well. I cut the back half of the uh, the hood jam off and then sanded this smooth so that it's a flat area because you want you don't want a, a harsh curve. You like that cowl, you can see the cowl here on the outside, it wants to curve as a natural curve. I always set it to where it's, or try, try to get it, keep it where it's flat on the inside. And you don't have a curve on the inside because you don't want your hinges, kind of what I, what I call splayed. Instead of having, you know, you want your hinges pretty much flat and parallel with one another side to side. You don't really want them tipping in like this. We well, don't fit in that curve of that, that cowl. Because what's going to happen is if the hinges are tip, tipped in like this, you're going to have a bind when you open up the hood. And it's going to create more of a bind than anything. And when it creates a bind, one, it's going to be a little harder to get the hood to, to come open. And for two, you run the risk of snapping off your hinges on the, on the other, underside of your cowl or trunk lid or inside the doors or wherever you want to, wherever you put them at. And once your car is built, completely done, and... You take it to a show and put it down on the table to show it at a show and you open up the hood and all of a sudden the hood hinge snaps off. You're going to get a little discouraged. So try to keep the hood hinges flat, you know, straight across as much as you can. You don't, like I say, you don't want it, have a, a kink or a bow to it. Like <clears throat> showing the backside of the hood here, you can see a little bit of the curvature of that hood and the trunk lid itself. Whoops. Trunk lid has one too trunk lid I'm going to try to 
hit this point right here and right here and utilize those two areas and get the hinge to come up as well as the hood these these the, the stock hood hinges these will come off and i'm going to try to go right where those are to mount the new hinges all i did is just took my flush cuts laid them in there and snipped them off and then from here you just take your sand pad or sanding stick whatever you use keep it flat keep it parallel and just sand them all smooth Voila, just like that. Like I say, I'll try to use these outside corners, these outside areas to mount the new hinge to. And I don't, if I bury this piece underneath the cowl, you can get by with using the full length of tube. But a lot of times I just cut it to where it's just a very small little bit holding it. That way you don't have the bulkiness of a tube like this across the inside of your cowl. If for whatever reason you open up the hood and you can see it, that way it just minimizes the, the clutter underneath the cowl area or inside the trunk. And all I do is just roll my X-Acto blade straight down on top of it and I'll kind of roll it back and forth and it snips it, cuts it pretty easily, clean. Now double check your brass again just make sure if you have a little bit of a like right now this is pretty sloppy on here it's pretty loose if you have a little tension on there that's fine and what i may do is i may put a little dab of super glue on the end when i go to build these hinges just to create a little bit of tension on there because right now it's pretty loose you can see it moving there if you have a little tension on there, it's kind of nice because when you open up the hood, the tension will actually hold the hood up or trunk lid up. You don't have to use a prop rod on it. A lot of times I try to do that. I just, I add the tension to it to keep the, you know, the hood or whatever I'm wanting open to stay open <clears throat> rather than using a prop rod on stuff. But there you can see it. I mean, it's pretty, there's nothing really holding it in place. So like I said, I just put a little dab of super glue on the inside and then I either ream it out with a file and get it to where the brass is just barely dragging on it. Hopefully this camera angle works. I'm just going to try to, all, I'm gonna, all I do is just take a little bit of super glue, put it on the end of the hole. Spritz it. Let that set up a minute right now the brass won't go through because that super goes got the end glued shut basically and all i do is i take a rifler's file just you know something with a point on it and go into the end where the super glue is and just start going back and forth till you get a hole to pop through once you get a hole to pop through Check your brass on it. Actually went too far with it. And a lot of times, like I said, that creates a tension to hold that brass on there. Right now I'm holding it straight up and down. And sometimes that tension is enough to hold, hold the hood in place. All right, once you get that, I usually try to leave Got enough tension on there, we gotta actually pull it to get it to move. Like I say, I'll take a little bit of the I'm only gonna use probably eighth of an inch. This piece, the plastic is gonna go on the underside of the cowl, but I don't I just like to try to get a idea of length. <clears throat> and then we're gonna just take and cut that off. Maybe. Well, always easier to do it on a harder surface. <laughs> this is a you know, foam pad. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Maybe. Yeah. 
Got a bit of tension on there now. I don't want to go through the brass. The brass don't go through. Okay, once those two pieces are cut, I'm going to grab my tweezers here. My big fingers ain't going to get up in there. These little pieces of plastic are going to then go inside the cowl area. But we're not going to glue them in yet. What I do is I build the hinges first to the hood. Glue the, the brass rod will go get glued to the hood. We'll create our hinge. And then when this splays out, these pieces will actually hopefully be kind of tucked up underneath the fender until they be kind of buried. You don't want to glue these in right now. Well, you could. You can put these into the into the cow into the cowl area where you want them, and then you can bend your hinges to fit it. Again, I like to try to do these separate, make two separate hinges. And then glue it all, you know, have it all glued in singly, separately. You, you, people have, and I've done it before on trunk lids, I built this hinge and then had the, this piece come all the way across to the other side and then had a piece of, you know, solid tube like this all the way across the inside of the cowl <clears throat> from side to side. You can do it that way too. But I like to do just a single each one separately. Now on these there's no real way, I mean there's no true way of doing it. A lot of people do it the same way. And I try to follow similar what they you know close to what they do as best I can. But you want to leave enough of a tab out here or an end out there to glue to the uh, glue to your hood. If you leave this extra long that's fine. You can always you know, we can always trim it off later. But all you're gonna do is you're gonna come back somewhere on the brass. I use uh, needle nose pliers, but I don't have them with me right now. But I'm just going to kind of lightly pinch them. You don't want to grab tight. Lightly pinch them in the tin to your uh, flush cuts. This particular pair, they have a little bit of a gap right here. You can kind of use that for bending metal too. All you're going to do is just put another a little bit of a bend in it. You can go 90 or you can go, you know, 85 degree, however far you want to go with it. And then from there, this area is going to be, like I say, the section that goes to the hood. But you want a little bit of a, okay, you're going to have like a little bit of a curved, it's going to dip and then come back up and then you're going to bend it to where this will then come straight off that side of the hood. <clears throat> Sometimes you need something to bend around if, if it'll work or not. But like I said, I just lightly grab it with the jaws of the flush cuts. Sorry, taking you off camera there. Something similar to this. What this is going to do is that's going to create this area right here to where when the hood opens, the cowl, this panel right here, the cowl panel will fit actually down inside that crevice. And that's what allow the hood to open up, have enough room to open. <clears throat> I'm going to tighten up the top of this just a little bit. Looking more like that. And now from here on that same plane, you want this, this end to come out on the same plane, the same horizontal plane as this piece here is. And what you're going to do from this piece, you're going to turn this piece sideways to where it's facing you like this. 
and you're going to bend this one straight out this way. And then the other side, you'll go the opposite way. You know, the bend will come out this way. And all I do is I come across, grab it just like that, where my flush cuts are pretty much flush with the other side, <clears throat> where you want it to be. I'm going to try to, <clears throat> try to do this with a camera here. You want that kind of like that, to where your flush cuts are almost flush with the top side or the other side of your hinge. I'm going to turn this sideways so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to turn it just like this, and I'm going to pull this off to one side. A little wonky, but... That's how you want the hinge to look. Close to that. No, hold on a second. Hitting everything in my workbench except for the camera angle here. <laughs> you want it looking similar to that. Like I say, this end will go to the hood. And just for giggles, let's say, now well, let's see. Say this is the cowl of your car, you know, this part here, where you're going to be going to. This tube will go on this. I said this tube will go on this. Tick, tock, tick, tock. <laughs> Sorry, it's early in the morning, I'm still tired. <laughs> but that'll act as your cowl to your hood. Now I might have to re-angle that. It's got a little too much on there. And what this will allow you to do, like I say, is when you open up the hood, that'll fall in just like that. Creating your creating your hinge or your clearance for your hood and everything to come together. And I am going to change the angle on the hinge a little bit. Took a little too tight on the top. If that happens, you can always re-arch, you know, kind of redo your, your curve here a little bit. There's no exact science to this. You just do whatever comes close, gets you close to what you're after. Sometimes, even if you have to straighten it back out, you can. So for now, it's going to be a little tricky after I get the shorten it up here. But. but that's pretty much how you want your hinge to look. Side to side, and it's not really got to got to straighten this out a little bit more. Get all of there. There we go. <clears throat> Actually, I like that to be a little bit more square, a little bit more of a ninety degree on that one. Might have to get my pliers out after. Them. <laughs> there we go. That's much better. I used my pair of pliers and just grabbed it like that and then just pushed it into the edge of my, edge of my workbench just to kind of get a little bit more of a 90 degree on it. But yeah, like I say, we might have to rework that hinge a little bit to get it to where this is a little, you want this kind of a little bit lower than the actual plane. I put a little bit too high. You want those to kind of meet up. You can see how the back, this this back back part of the hinge is actually higher than the rest of it, and that's not what you want. So we'll have to rework it a little bit. Or just bend a new hinge. Might be easier just to do that, I guess. A lot of times I just kind of grab it, come and grab the hinge the best you can and just form it up and around. <clears throat> like 
that. Why is it easier to do this with a camera out of the way? <laughs> And then with pliers, you can kind of see how I got it now. Or this plane, or this is a little bit higher than the jaws of the pliers. You got this gap right here in between. Where this is a little bit higher than the face of the pliers. And then what you can do there is same concept. <clears throat> oh, my throat's draining today. <clears throat> Sorry for all the clearing of my throat here. But, uh, same thing. You just take this and then just bend it straight over. Off to the side. And that creates your hinge. And then now, when you look at it from the end, you can see how this is lower than this side reason why you want that is when you put that plastic tubing around it this creates the gap that allows everything to come flat and flush with one another and again you gotta true it up a little bit too a little bit off there you want this almost a 90 degree angle you want that in an almost a 90 degree angle like I said, the best way I do that is grab with the jaws like that and then push this against the workbench. Gives you a little bit better angle on it. And then like I say, you want that at a 90 degree that way. You want that at a 90 degree that way. You want it all square because this has all got to hinge and flow together pretty nicely. And then with that on there, I don't have a straight edge here. Hold on a second. See how that comes across. Oops. We lost it. As my daughter would say, blooper reel, blooper reel. No, I'm not putting my bloopers out online. <laughs> but that will come across then. Once you're on the hood, once you're on the cowl, that all comes in line and stays level with one another. And then, like I say, the other side, you just take it and instead of instead of bringing this tab out this way, you just bend it the opposite way, bring it out that way. And you want to try to keep these uniform with one another as much as you can. Doesn't always work, but. Even if you have to pick up your other one as you're building them. Compare your angles. Make sure you're kind of kind of the same with one another. Always kind of a good template and a tool is to work off of your other one. That's a little wide on the opening there. <clears throat> Whoops, brass is spinning on you. See how we're a little low on the belly of this one coming up. But we can tighten that up. One nice thing about having a pair of needle nose pliers, you can always use them to put angle in. I think I'm going to open that back up again. <clears throat> Don't like the way that one's coming out. All right, let's try this one again. That one just that was a stamp of brass and ass. Do over. Sorry, I'm off camera here. 
working with a different camera camera angle right now it's not really working out the best might be for you to give you a little bit better visual and stuff but all right i'm gonna try it that way that might be a little off you don't have to be exact but you want to be try to be somewhat close actually could open that up a little bit more right about there that's pretty much spot on the other one like I say from here this hinge will now bend out the other way you want to try to get Adjust your pliers in the same position. It's got a little bit of a gap on it. Make sure you're square on it. And being that this hinge goes out that way, we're going to bend this one over this way. Thus giving you two opposites. And we'll just trim that off. These will get shortened up a little bit, you know, then you'll layer on too. And there you go. Right now we'll kind of cut it off here, I think. I don't know how long of a video I've got going here, but to make it a little easier to upload, I'm going to keep them short. Um, next video, we'll come back and we'll take all four of these pieces and we'll put a hood on it. You'll do the same concept, same idea as what we did here for the trunk lid. You can do that the same exact way. You know, then you can also do these same, same ideas, same concept for door hinges as well. I've done a lot of work, a lot of the door hinges in the same fashion. You just, instead of having them, you know, mounted like this, open up the trunk, you can have them inside your door, where your door will open. You can use that on a hood hinge or just about where anywhere you need a hinge. But yeah. For today that's our start of our hinges we'll keep these till next time and maybe tomorrow morning i can do a follow-up on the rest other part of this and whatnot so with that in mind we'll uh cut you all loose take care everyone have a good day enjoy your day and uh we'll catch up with you tomorrow see you on the corner take care <laughs>